I've got a really fun experiment for you today, and it's one that's going to look at the huge forces involved in expansion and contraction. You might have noticed when you travel in a car sometimes on the motorway raised sections, the car goes bump, bump, bump over the bridge sections. And there's a reason for this. You might have wondered why there are all these gaps that they haven't filled in. And it's that I want to discuss in the video today. The other time you notice this effect is when you travel on the railways, particularly older bits of the railway or on heritage lines, that the trains, when they go over the rails, certainly on the older railways, make that ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk train sound. In other words, the wheels are going along a metal rail, but there are gaps in the rail. And every time the wheel hits a gap, it makes a sort of clunking sound. And again, there's a reason for having gaps in the metal rails. So, as I said earlier, we're going to look at expansion and contraction today. And here's the apparatus I'm going to demonstrate it with. It consists of just a metal frame, this is just a holder, and two other important bits. A metal bar that we're going to heat up, and it's going to be rigidly held at this end with a nut. And at the other end, we're going to hold it in place with a thick metal bar. So that goes across there. I'm going to tighten this up until it's really tightly held. And in fact, if I can get this tight enough, you can actually lift the whole frame with it. And then I'm going to heat up this bar as hot as I can get it and make sure that I tighten this nut at this end so it's all held rigidly. And then we'll pour cold water upon it. So what I need to do is light a couple of Bunsen's and get this bar absolutely red hot and then tighten it as tight as I can up against this piece of metal at the end. So I've been heating the bar for a little while now and what you'll notice is I can take up a bit of slack on this nut here even though it was tight before. I'm going to continue heating it and see if I can continue to take up slack on the nut at the end. So I've been heating it for about another minute and let's see what happens at this end. So again I've got another about less than a quarter of a turn but I've got a turn on that nut again. So as I heat up this bar Every time I heat it for about a minute, I'm going to make sure that it's really tight at this end and is therefore holding this metal bar in, the shiny silver one, very tight at the other end. So, a bit more heating and let's see if there's any more slack to take up. And there we go. I can turn this end. It's only a tiny amount, but it's enough to take up the extra length that's appeared in this horizontal bar whilst I've heated it. Now, that's going to take some explaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this for as long as I can still take up slack at the far end. And once it's got to a state where I can't take up any slack, that's where the fun really begins. So now the fun begins. We've noticed that when we heated this, as it got hotter and hotter and hotter, the bar appeared to get longer and we had to take up the slack at the far end with the brass nut. But I've been heating it for a while now and there's no more slack to take up. This end seems pretty tight. So the silver metal bar closest to the camera is now tightly wedged in that far end. So we've got the bar that's really, really hot. I'm gonna turn off the two Bunsen's. You need to watch this end very carefully and I'm just gonna pour cold water over the hot metal bar. And there it goes. Okay, an almighty crack and the piece of metal at this end is broken right through.
This is an absolutely fabulous experiment and I really enjoy doing it. If you remember, we held this piece of metal in here rigidly with the hot metal bar and then when we poured cold water on it, huge forces were involved and it snapped it completely in half. So we need to explain what's going on. So time for an explanation. And I've put the two broken bits up here so you can see them and one that hasn't broken yet back in the apparatus. So this is all about expansion and contraction. When I heated the metal bar and took the slack up in it, it was expanding. As we added heat, the atoms in the metal bar were vibrating more and moving further apart, getting more potential energy. And so we took up the slack, it got longer as we heated it, we took up the slack again, and once it reached thermal equilibrium, it couldn't lose or gain any more heat, so it wasn't going to expand any more. But the fun comes, of course, when you pour cold water on it very rapidly, because then it contracts rapidly. But because this end is completely tightly blocked, the only thing that can happen is something can break. And this piece of metal that was holding it in place snaps. And that's really important when you're designing bridges or railway lines or similar systems, you need to know about expansion and contraction and the huge forces involved. So that's why motorway bridges go ka-chunk, ka-chunk when you go over them. If you can imagine, the temperature changes in the UK are such that if the concrete was put right up against the next piece of concrete, if you had a really warm day, those two would expand, push hard against each other and crack, and you certainly wouldn't want that to happen. The same applies with railway lines, that old railway lines weren't joined together with welds, and so on a hot day, the rails could expand and contract, and the gap allowed for expansion and contraction. In the case of motorway bridges, they often have an area that slides together or slides apart, or they put some rubber in the gap. You can see this on poured concrete roads as well, where there are gaps between each section to allow for expansion and contraction. So, as I said, the forces involved are absolutely massive. And get this wrong, and your concrete will crack. Or in the case of your railway lines, it can be quite spectacular. They can actually buckle in a huge way. And imagine what would happen if a train then went down that track. It would derail immediately. Modern railway lines, they've got clever methods of joining the rail, so you don't get quite the same gap. But they've thought very carefully about how the expansion will happen. There's so much more I can say about expansion and contraction. Just think about the huge long suspension bridges like the Severn Bridge, how much longer they must get on a hot day and how much shorter on a cold day. But we've got started on expansion and contraction, so I hope you enjoyed that experiment and I look forward to seeing you again next time.